All right, so in class, um, you should have received a chart looking like this. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to cover um, the basic information that you know up to this point that it would go into this chart. This is known as the case use chart. All right, so it's double-sided. It has all five cases on it, minus the vocative um, and the vocative. Uh, and it's divided up into three columns. The first column is what does it look like, covering the endings for all five declensions, masculine, feminine, and neuter forms. And then, what do we call it, or what is it? Um, this is the terms that I ask for on the test, such as when you're looking at something, I'm like, oh, what case is this? And you're like, oh, it's nominative. I'm like, all right, why is it nominative? And you say, oh, it's the subject. That's what's going in this column. So subject, direct object, possession, uh, things like that. And then the last column is how is it recognized? Um, what do we do to, uh, how can we identify what case or why it's that use currently, all right? Uh, we're gonna be filling this in a lot throughout this year, uh, but we wanna get caught up in what we already know, all right? So this first video is gonna cover nominative, genitive, and dative. The second one will cover the accusative and the ablative. So let's get started with the nominative. So the first thing that you guys learned about the nominative case is it does what? Yes. It tells you what the subject of a sentence is. All right, so this is going to go in the very first line up here. And this is not just any subject. This is the subject of a finite verb. So the, a finite verb just means a verb ending in an ending like O, slash M, S, T, uh, mus, tis, or N, T. And the reason I say finite verbs is because eventually you're going to see things that can be subjects of infinitives, and so that's a little bit different. How do we know some? Uh, how do we know something is our subject? We ask the question, who or what verbs? All right, so who or what verbs? So this is so this is what goes into that first blank column. This is what goes into the second blank column. Right? in the nominative section. The second thing that the nominative can do is it can be the predicate nominative. All right? And the predicate nominative only occurs when you have what type of verb? No, nope, not action. Yes, a Lincoln verb. And so the Lincoln verb in that Latin is sum, esse, fui. So if you see a form of sum, esse, fui in a sentence, you're going to have not only a subject, but you're also going to have a predicate. For example, um, puer est Romanus. Puer is who or what verbs. Who or what is, the boy is. And then is what is a Roman makes it the predicate nominative. And this is for both nouns and adjectives. And so we ask the question, linking verb, what, uh, who, or what? All right, so these are our first two in our nominative columns. We're going to skip the next two blanks. We're going to go down to where below this double line right here. All right, so you have one, two, three, four blanks. Then you have a double line. You want to go to that double line because we're going to move on to the genitives next. All right, um, we'll fill in the rest of the nominatives later, but for right now, these are the only two we need. All right. So the first thing when we went when we were dealing with genitives in stage 17, the first thing we learned about them was yes, possessing possession. So the possessive genitive. And how do we know something in an English sentence is possessive, or how do we know how to translate the possessive genitive? We have apostrophe s, s apostrophe for the plurals, and then of blank. All right. So all 
Willa Barbilly, we know that it is Barbilis's villa, and we can translate it Barbilis's villa or the villa of Barbilis. Now, what's the other genitive that we already know? We, have, we know three total. So the next one, yes, is the quantitative. And I also call this the partitive. Uh, it's just a, tr a more traditional way of knowing it, but it both, it, they both mean the same thing. So the partitive or the quantitative, same thing. Two, two forms, uh, two names for the same thing. Um, and it expresses the it expresses the larger whole of which something um, is a part of, I guess, or has been taken from some some part has been taken. So for example, we have turba puerorum, the crowd of boys. So this is a crowd, a small section, taken from all the boys in the greater Alexandrian metropolitan area. Or the wea. Complete um, ankylarum. So the street is full of slave women. All right. It tells us what the street is being filled with. The part of how the street, what part the street is being filled with. All right. So we get partitive or quantitative. And then the last one we know is yes, the descriptive genitive. All right, and so this is when we have a noun modified by an adjective, um, and the and this pair is used to describe another noun. So, you know, we were we were talking about um, in stage twenty, astrologus. So this is our our subject of the sentence. This is the another noun, and he is in geni in geni parvi. So he is a the astrologer is a. Uh, Man of of wicked of, of evil character. All right. So parvi is our adjective describing the noun character, which together as a pair describe the astrologer. All right. And that's the descriptive genitive. And you guys know a lot of this already. I'm not. We're just reviewing what this stuff is. Hopefully solidifying it. All right. So we're gonna skip now. We should have the first three rows filled. Oh, that's my filled in one. The first three rows filled in on here. Uh, we're going to skip the next four, go to the next double line, all right? And we're going to deal with the dative. If you need to pause now to copy any of this down, this would be a good time because we're about to erase it. So the dative, the first thing you learned about datives was what? That they are the... Yes, they are the indirect objects. All right. And there is no preposition in the Latin. Just as a reminder, there is no preposition in Latin. Um, so you should be at the line right here. 
all right? Just as a, a make sure you're writing in the same, in the correct location. Um, and so this is when you have verbs like giving or saying or telling or showing or doing. When you have a verb like that, give, say, show, tell, um, do, etc. Um, you're going to need an indirect object, and you translate that with a two or a four. All right. So, in an example, um, Quintus Tabernam Clementi Dennett. Quintus gave a shop, direct object, to Clemens. Indirect object, all right? Um, or I, Mr. Carroll, shows the Latin to the students, to you guys, all right? So when you have any type of verb like this, you will often end up with an indirect object. Now, what's the other time that we see a lot of, um, of dative words coming after verbs? Yes. It's with words like faweo or credeo, um, exactly, or imper, imperaro, which is one of our new ones, or persuadeo. Um, it's, we call that with special verbs. All right? And so these special verbs, it, it's where in English we have a direct object. So claimings, orders, the slave. In English, that's a direct object. In Latin, it doesn't come out as a direct object. So, English direct object. And so we're going to have um, of verbs like favor, please, trust, believe, Uh, persuade, order, obey, let's see, oh, spare, and then etc. So a lot of these verbs are plus datives, all right, and they list them in our books as plus datives, all right, so that's what we call a dative with special verb. Now there's one other dative that we know, and it's, you see it as just a plus dative, so you might think it's a special verb, but it's not quite. All right? This is dative with compound verbs. All right? So many compound verbs in Latin end up taking a dative. Um, these are verbs that in Latin, or that let me, uh, let me write this correctly. Verbs with a Latin form made with the uh, prepositions ad, ante, con, in, inter, Ob, post, pri, sub, super. All right. So when you see verbs that are made or that have a compound form with one of these types of prepositions, it's going to take a dative case. Apropinquo is odd plus propinquo. All right. Um, occurrent is the form. So this is odd plus. This is ob plus. This is ob plus curo. All right. He happened upon. He approached. And we get data data forms. All right. Uh, in in our most recent one of our most recent stories, modestus, um, strith. 
Stratione, Stratione, uh, Mikis, Que, current. So Modestus happened upon Strithio and his friends. These are both in the dative because occurrent is a compound verb, right? So that's um, that's a pretty you know good guess if you're looking at a sentence you're like I have no idea what this dative is and you look at the verb and you're like that looks like it might be a compound. You're probably looking at a dative with compound verbs. All right, so that's all for the front side. Um, the next video we're going to go on to the back side.